Hello and welcome to today's story time with the science teacher and the story we're featuring today is called Yara's Tawari Tree and it's written by Yossi Lapid and illustrated by Joanna Pasek. Here's the introductory video. I'm not going to talk much about it. I just want you to watch and kind of get a feel for um, the main theme that's centered around today's story. So we'll go ahead and begin. Since 1900, Bolivia has suffered some 40 disastrous floods. Extreme events are becoming more frequent and violent. Floods have so far claimed the lives of 140,000 people and affected 3 million. Over 20 indigenous communities are regularly flooded in the Amazon basin of Bolivia. That's the case of Capaina, along the river Beni. 25 families live here. Natural disasters can isolate communities for months, and traditional medicine then turns out to be the most effective first response to diseases. Doña Juanita and Doña Antonia are local healers. They know how to use plants to look after people. When we have disasters caused by the river, the wind, there's no money to go to the hospital. So these medicines are quite good to have when all these disasters happen. I started learning about plants when I was a child. I would go to the jungle with my granny and see how she would take some bark to later boil. I'm taking some ajo ajo. It's really good against pain, especially persistent pain. Doña Juanita and Doña Antonia work with the NGO Soluciones Prácticas. They don't live in Capaina, but came here to share knowledge and information. The NGO is funded by the European Department for Humanitarian Aid, and it gives their traditional practices a modern twist. This has been practiced for centuries. What we want is to give it legal and scientific backing. So we finalized a study, an inventory of medicinal plants. We found over a hundred, but there are many more in the area that have yet to be identified. So we'll continue to expand it. Bolivian law already recognizes the role of traditional healers. Now with that inventory, the NGO is working to protect and disseminate their knowledge. Meetings and exchanges between Doña Juanita, Doña Antonia and Capaina's local healer Doña Dilma will become routine. <laughs> It's spicy. <laughs> they exchange leaves, roots, and plants that they'll each grow in their own gardens. They also share recipes and treatments. Supporting traditional medicine is part of a wider project funded by the EU to help Bolivian ethnic groups be more resilient. Some indigenous communities are native to these regions, but others come from the highlands and other areas of the country. So it's important that newcomers can also benefit from this knowledge. Are these practices under threat? With deforestation, medicinal plants are found farther and farther away. So the project promotes the practice of collecting plants and seeds from the forest to plant them closer to communities, so that in case of an emergency, you don't need to go deep into the jungle to find them. One of the goals of this project is to share the knowledge of the healers with younger generations and take it outside the jungle, for example, to Ruranabake Market. Ruranabake is about 20 minutes by boat from Capaina. Doña Juanita and Doña Antonia made the trip together to bring their remedies to the weekly market. 
Doña Antonia has had a stall here for about ten years. I sell a bit of everything. I bring what people ask me for. The World Health Organization says traditional medicine is an important and often underestimated part of health services for which demand is growing, and ensuring its quality can help expand access to care. Hang on a second. There we go. <clears throat> All right, so we'll begin our story. It's called Yara's Tawari Tree. And again, it's written by Yossi Lapid and illustrated by Joanna Pasek. And it's dedicated to Yana. In a faraway jungle, by a big waterfall, smoke rose in the air. Things were not good at all. They are clearing the forest. They are now very near. This is surely my end, sighed a seedling with fear. On the bank of a river, in a house made of wood, Close to the place where the scared seedling stood, a hard-working mother and her kind-hearted child lived freely together, eating food from the wild. Yara hugged Mama and went off to the woods for mushrooms and berries and other such goods. But something strange happened. A parrot named Chant led her down a small path to the terrified plant. I need help, said the seedling. I'm a Tawari tree. They'll cut me down soon. Can you please rescue me? Yes, answered Yara. I will take care of you. I'll start right away, and I know what to do. She dug out the plant, taking care of its roots, making sure not to damage its leaves or its shoots. Then she turned to her house and ran there very fast. Help, Mama, she cried. This tree may not last. I see, declared Mama. Let's scout all around. We'll find the best place for this tree in the ground. The seedling was happy to get a new start. It thrived on the love from Yara's big heart. Its leaves were abundant. Its trunk shot up tall. Its roots down below grew thick in the fall. Yara was proud of her beautiful tree. From a branch at the top, there was so much to see. You're special, she whispered. You're now my best friend. Your scary ordeal turned out well in the end. One day, when Yara came back from the wood, her mama could tell that she didn't feel good. Lay down, my dear Yara. I'll make you hot tea. I'll rush to the village and bring Manu with me. Manu was old, his eyesight was weak. He stared at Yara and touched her hot cheek. He whispered to Mama straight into her ear, Her illness is grave, might be deadly, I fear. There was once a tree that could offer a cure. If it's still around, it will help us, I'm sure. I'll go to the forest and I'll search for a clue. I will do anything for Yara and you. He picked up his stick and stepped through the door. A very large leaf then fell down to the floor. Manu rubbed his weak eyes as he stared at the leaf. I can hardly believe this can end all of our grief. Manu needed some bark from the Tawari tree. Go ahead, said the plant. It's no trouble for me. Then Manu prepared a dark-colored brew from an ancient recipe no one else knew. He took the hot potion to Yara's dry lips. He asked her to drink just a few little sips. Yara opened her eyes as she started to wake. 
She recovered now slowly from her terrible ache. Was I dreaming, she asked. How long did it last? This room kept on spinning and spinning so fast. But now I feel better. Thank. Let's go thank our tree. It, I helped it survive, and then it took care of me. I love this rainforest. I cherish this green. When I'm in this jungle, I feel like a queen. In a faraway jungle by a big waterfall, the Tawari trees are again strong and tall. They thrive in a forest sustained by our love. They smile at us daily, sending love from above. And this is the author's notes. The Amazon rainforest is known for its rich biodiversity of both animals and plants. So that means there's lots of different kinds of animals and plants. Some of the plants of the Amazon have been long used by native ancient cultures and civilizations for medicinal purposes. Today, many of those plants are used around the world to treat serious human ailments such as cancer, diabetes, ulcers, and much, much more. The bark of a Tawari tree has powerful healing benefits and is commonly used as one of the top 10 medicinal plants of the Amazon. And that concludes our story. Thank you so much for joining us, and have a great day. Take care. Bye.